Okay, uh, Chuck and I are here in the machine shop. And what we made is this tooling. Here's your magnesium slug. Here's your base. And here's your copper tube. So, let's put that in there. Chuck's going to pour the salt substitute in, and then this tool is going to come in on the press and press it in, compact it in. So we just want to show you the tooling. We're going to check um, IB pointless theory here. And see if we can get it up to 2 milliamps. So, be back for another segment. Okay, so Chuck and I are here. And what we're doing is using this 1210 hydraulic press and we're pushing the salt into the tube around the magnesium rod. And so now what we're going to do is let it loose and we're going to take a measurement of voltage. should just uh, pull out of that piece, Chuck, and then it, that should just twist out. Okay, so Chuck has it here. We're just going over here and test it so. So there you go, I'd be pointless. We're not quite finished yet. And that's nine-tenths of a volt. Right, we're not measuring current yet, because it's got to be able to run an oscillator. So we'll be back. Okay, now Chuck and I have compacted it more, and you can see in here. Show them the back side of that cell. See the magnesium there? And there's the voltmeter, and now we're going to test it again. So there you go. You're at 1.0671 there. And what we're doing each time is we're adding more of the Morton salt substitute yeah. in there and keep compacting it. Okay, so we're going to, we'll be back. So, uh, Chuck again is compacting and you can see he's uh, using this 12 ton hydraulic press, but I'm not going to stand anywhere near this. Because it's starting to bulge the copper, but we're only going to take it so far. And then uh, we're going to take another voltage reading because we're looking for about 1.2, 1.3 volts. We'll get as close as we can. Okay, there you go. And we're taking our time with this because we're not quite certain of the the tooling's okay, but and hardened, but we're not quite sure. So he's gonna test this again. So we're at 1.103 right now, or four or five. It's going up probably because of the heat in his hand. So it's uh. I think we're pretty close. We're going to see if, what kind of current we get now. And we'll be back. Okay, this is where we got it now. And Chuck's going to measure it. So there you go. 1.19, almost 1.2 volts right where I said in the uh, calculation. Okay dependent on the surface area and the compression in the Morton salt substitute but I think that I'm going to try after we're done with this we'll take this out of here we'll push it out and uh, we'll try the Rigel salts mixture with a hydrate and compact that dry so here we go we'll see what we get for current now we'll be back okay this is in microamps and you're going to see here that it's barely deflecting the meter. 
so it's in pico pico amps and uh, I think what we're going to do here is this maintains the dipole because if Chuck puts this meter on it it's back up there but it has no substantial current at this point in time so I think what we'll do is just, let's just add a drop of water to it on here let's add a drop of water to it and see if it is the water remember this is compacted in here we're not really worried about the magnesium because we can clean it and the copper we can clean and we just want to see if it's the moisture that this is requiring. Okay, now you're off the scale in microamps. And we're going to go to the oscillator here. See what it's given in milliamps. There you go. There's about two almost two milliamps exactly and that's going to run the oscillator so Chuck's going to hydrate it a little bit more because I think what's going on here is to make this work correctly that's all we don't want okay so now you're at five microamps and let's see what the reaction of this is so we'll be back because what I'm going to do is take all this out of here and I'm going to make a hydrate mix and force it in the hull without any water and let's see what happens. So we're at five, almost four and a half mils and it's holding there. But it's holding there because of the hydration. So there you go. That's our smallest oscillator, radiant oscillator. It's got the most turns here, and so it's it's approaching about, and it's staying at four and a half milliamps. So we'll be back. Okay, so I'm back, and you can see that we've hydrated this. We only added a little bit, and uh, now the cell is at seven milliamps, and there's no reaction here whatsoever around the electrodes. Because if the salt was going to react with the copper, we'd be starting to get green now with current. So we're going to change the mix and be back to a hydrate mix without the salt substitute and see what kind of currents we can get. Okay, once again, Chuck and I are going to show you. We made these tools, and this holds the copper, and you place the magnesium about center and Chuck will go ahead and filter this. Here's the hydrate solution. All mixed. Exactly the same recipe I gave you on the internet. By the way, this right here is a pinch. When I say a pinch, that's a measurement. And there's a measuring indicator for it right here. It says a pinch on it. So go ahead, Chuck. So we'll uh, we'll fill this. We'll start to compress it. We'll show you again, and we'll be back. 
Okay, we're back, Chuck, at the press, and this is a hydrate solution that we made. It's a combination of heptahydrate and hydrate and uh, iron pyrite and magnesium filings. So Chuck's going to compress it in the tube, and then we'll take a voltage measurement. And again, we're going to hit this with a 12-ton press. Now, this, this chemical feels a lot. These salts feel a lot more, has a lot more moisture in it than, uh, than what we've been doing with the Morton salt substitute. So, we'll be back. So, here we are again. Chuck's going to go for the second compression with the half dehydrate solution that I've given you all on the internet. And uh, we're going to add a little bit of pressure to it this time. And then we're going to come back with a, another voltage reading. Okay, so we figure um, we're compressing this at about 1,500 pounds, maybe 2,000 pounds. And we have to be very careful when we do it. So there we go. So we'll be back. Okay, here we are measuring it again. And we want you to remember that when we're pressing this, this cell is completely shorted. So it's going to be rising up here. And uh, there it is. So we'll finish compressing this. And we'll go back and test. Okay, we're going for the uh, the third compression. It looks like we're going to compress this about maybe four times because the uh, heptahydrate mix is uh, quite a bit different than the Morton salt. And so, we'll just do this, and uh, we'll take another measurement in a while, after we let this sit for a few minutes, but we'll be back. And uh, we want this to compress, and then we'll add some more pressure to it. Okay, meanwhile we're back while Chuck's wearing that cell. And this is where IB Pointless's cell hydrated. Um, is leveled off at, and that's two and a half milliamps, and that's under pressure. And you can see nothing's coming out of it, and there's no water, so the water's evaporating. If you add water now, nothing changes, and it, but it's running the oscillator just fine. So now we'll go go ahead and here's the new one we made. This is a heptahydrate cell. And right away, you can see no oscillator. So it's a half a milliamp dry. So go ahead and hydrate it, Chuck. Yeah, I gotta use a little bit here. Okay, so there's a, a drop or so. climbing and the oscillator's on. So go ahead and let's hydrate the bottom.
so we'll just let it sit there. There's two milliamps. Almost two and a half milliamps. And uh, we'll just let it soak in and we'll do that. So here we're checking it for heat. You can see that it's climbing a little bit there, but settled in after hydration at about five milliamps and as the heat dissipates it's not very warm because I can hold it it's about five and a half milliamps there and it's running the oscillator just fine and so we'll see here but there you go there's two cells done basically the same way except one with a hydrate heptahydrate mix as the recipe you have on the internet and one with the salt substitute and this is pretty well dried out now no water at all so you could probably parallel these two and this one now is rising this heptahydrate one is rising. It's about six, six and a half milliamps now. So, that's how we got it in the tube. Glad we could show you. Thanks for watching.